Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to the video. Um, <laughs> I decided I wanted to follow up on some of my substantiated claims in the previous video with a bit of, everybody get ready to clap, descriptive statistics. Okay, um, I want to give some disclaimers before I even start getting into all the the ridiculous details, okay? First and foremost, everything I talk about in this video is purely about my own personal gaming backlog of games I've played, games I've finished, whatever. I I have no intention of speaking about, you know, every existing game from the 7th, 8th, ninth generation consoles. This, what, what I'm speaking about is meant to be a very small sample size because it's the best I can really do without, you know, pouring weeks and weeks of work into this. And that's not my intention. Secondly, um, everything I talk about is subject to change and regularly. I'm making this um, as of June 2023. You know, a month from now, a lot of things could be different. It's not only is it possible, it's very likely that games will become unlisted and become unplayable in the future. And it's a lot less likely that something would relist, but regardless, my point is things are going to change, so this is just a snapshot in time. Third, I am not a statistician. I'm not an authority on any of these methods. My data manipulation, it was definitely done in good faith. Like, I'm not trying to, like, make up any weird narratives. But it likely is very flawed and uses incomplete methodology. And that's just the risk of doing what I do. And finally, I want to say that... It, it does seem like I have kind of a hate campaign against multiplayer. But outside of the very narrow context of achievement hunting, I've played more multiplayer games than most in my life. I've spent years and years where I took breaks from achievements because I was obsessed with games like Destiny and Call of Duty. I love multiplayer. That is not the point of these videos. It's just, you know, a different aspect of achievement hunting and what it means in, in a world dominated by gaming. Um, in the multiplayer space. Hopefully those all make sense. So, now that I've spoken about those, I'm going to get to the actual point of the video. I will admit that I already tried to film this video once, and I spoke way too much and I got caught up on too many semantics. Um, so I'm hoping whichever version of this you see is the condensed version that is a little more clear. I need to make something very clear, actually. Um, I touched on it in my disclaimers, but if I don't explain this correctly, then I don't think anything makes sense moving forward. When I say that everything is based purely on my personal gaming library, imagine that you're me, a stranger you've never met, Every single bit of data in this video is gathered from my perspective, meaning they are games I have never completed with 100% achievements or whatever. They are achievements I have not earned in DLCs I don't know. Basically, outside of the context of my own um, experience, none of these statistics make any sense. They don't have any marker on the real world because like, I'm not including a DLC I own and completed. It doesn't factor into this list. This list is like, let's pretend you're me trying to go back through your gaming library and complete all these games. That's what it's talking about, essentially. I hope that makes sense. Otherwise, it's it's a pretty nonsensical list. Okay, so anyways, I did what any sane, well-adjusted person would do, and I made a spreadsheet. So, this spreadsheet includes basically every game I have ever played that satisfies two specific criteria. First and foremost, it has to have achievements and or trophies. Meaning... 
this is Xbox and PlayStation 7th gen and onward. Um, I'm not including things like Steam Achievement. Because I, even if I did want to, do, want to include that, I've, I've like never played a Steam in my life. I don't on PC. Second criteria. I must have not already earned every achievement. So none of these games I have 100%ed. And that obviously further narrows the pool of games I'm talking about. But again, this is meant to be a look into my backlog and the likelihood of me completing the game in the future. If I already finished the game permanently and then suddenly it becomes unlisted or the server shut down, it, may, it might make me sad, but it doesn't personally affect me as far as achievement hunting is concerned because I already did it. So it doesn't make sense to include in this spreadsheet. With that all being said, you know, here's the sheet in all its glory. I'm going to take a second or a minute or too long to go through what I mean by all these columns and why I organized it this way. And then I'm going to get into a little bit more detail as to, like, my takeaways from this. And if the intention is to follow up on my last video, I just want to, like, give a little bit of numbers from my own personal experience and perspective that either supports or refutes some of the claims I made. Okay, firstly, I have obviously all the games in the first column. Then I have a, a column for the version I played. Now, why is this necessary? It's not, but it's mostly there just for disambiguation. Um, I've been known to play the same game on multiple systems or multiple versions. If a game I love comes out with a, a, a new version that has its own achievement list, I, I tend to complete both. So I just have that listed as there may be otherwise duplicate games that would just be more confusing than it's worth. Um... And this really, like I said, applies mostly to like different versions. If a game gets a remaster and has a new list or something. Um, I have a column for whether or not I personally own the game. Now, I will say that like if there's a no, it, it either means I played it through some subscription service like Game Pass or you know, EA Play. Or, I owned it at some point, and then I sold it. Which, I don't necessarily regret for most of them. Except for, like, old games. But I was a kid, so, you know, we do the... Um, I will say that of all of these columns, I'm the least confident in the accuracy of this. Because I didn't personally double-check these for the purpose of the video. Specifically because it doesn't impact anything I'm talking about or matter for the video whatsoever. So some of these could be wrong. That's fine. Uh, then I have backwards compatibility. Um, this is an easy topic, but there's so many weird little specifics all based on what console I'm talking about. Generally speaking, um, this is mostly just there to count the Xbox 360 games because, as you can see, I really do not have many PlayStation games at all on this list. Um, the bulk is Xbox, and if you don't know how Xbox works, essentially 360 games are the only ones that can be backwards compatible because the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X are essentially like the same system architecture wise um meaning i don't think there is any xbox one games that are not playable on a series x like they're the same system so that yeah so if i have it listed as backwards compatible or not that's really just meant to count the 360 games as plenty of them are not um, and then PlayStation's a lot more sketchy, and I will say, like, as an Xbox fan, I might get some of this wrong. But here is my understanding. PlayStation 3 games 
are backwards compatible on the PlayStation 5 digitally. But the discs are not. And my understanding is that neither the physical or digital versions of the PlayStation 3 games are backwards compatible on the PS4. Okay? So, for the purpose of this backwards compatible column, I am lit. That's what the kindas are for. Those are just PS3 games that I. It's weird because they're, they're backwards compatible for the PS5, but they skip a generation because the PS4 is weird. Okay? Basically, what this column is saying is, is the game backwards compatible on the most current generation of that console? That's all it means. And it's, it's more complicated to explain than it is to understand, hopefully. Now we can get to more of the point of my previous video and now this video. Um... I, I did a cursor, cursory amount of research into a few topics that my previous video was based on. And I will reiterate that this is purely related to achievements for all of the following criteria and nothing else. Games may have multiplayer, they may have co-op, they may have DLC, but if I don't need achievements for them or they aren't required for achievements in general, then they have not been tracked in this spreadsheet. I hope I'm being clear about that. So starting with the co-op column, um, ah, oh, these notes get in the way. I should, I'm not, you know, I'm not an Excel wizard. I just like Excel. We have a working relationship. Um, the co-op column is noting whether or not a game has a required co-op element. If the game requires online co-op, this is obviously the strictest category because it relies on a healthy online service on top of the co-op requirement itself. Then of course there's the local co-op, which generally speaking is used as an alternative to online co-op, so usually you can play either way. It's rare that a game has only local co-op, but it does happen even in recent times. A game that comes to mind is Battletoads, the newer one. Only had local co-op. Very strange. Um, this does also, when I have local co-op listed, um, it also means, like, you know, there are achievements that you can earn by yourself if you have, a, like, X number of extra controllers and accounts, or you can double box and you have two Xboxes. That all would classify under local co-op, because not everybody has those, so I'm not gonna, like, make some weird separate modifier for it. Um, I also want to note that I do, for a couple games I have optional as a, as a, a category here, and that shouldn't be here. Essentially, some games... Co-op will make things a lot easier for you to earn achievements, but if it is possible to do solo, then I should just have it listed as NA. That's all optional is. It's just saying, like, for this example, Aegis Wing. You can do Aegis Wing solo. It's just insanely hard, whereas if you did it co-op, it's a lot easier. Um, but, yeah, it... Again, this is one of those things where it's like, I'm, I'm over-explaining it, but really, does it have online co-op requirements? Does it have local co-op requirements? Are there no co-op requirements at all? Or, the final one, is the co-op service discontinued in some way, making the completion impossible? Okay, that's co-op. Hopefully that's easy enough. I would say that the competitive column is very similar. We're talking about competitive multiplayer, whatever that means. You know, the obvious, like, first thought when I say that is, like, shooters and, like, Call of Duty, that kind of thing. Gears of War. But some games kind of blur the line on what, like, what does it mean to be competitive versus co-op in certain scenarios? If I wasn't super sure, maybe I included both, or maybe I just included one and... For the purpose of this sheet, it doesn't really matter. But basically, if there's required multiplayer elements, 
The only things that really matter are, is the service still functioning? Do the servers still run? Is the game still playable? If so, even if nobody plays the game, even if it's dead, you can at least boost it. So that's important to know if it's functioning or not. Then if it's not functioning, it must be discontinued, meaning the server shut down. I might have an optional listed here somewhere, but again, I should have removed those before I did this. The, originally, the intent was to use this as my own personal checklist, and I and I will, but I'll. That's what those kinds of extra details are for that do not serve my message here. Okay. Then we're gonna move on to the final criteria I cared about, which was DLC. I didn't really talk about DLC at all in the last video, but I think DLC is another weird component to achievement hunting and the whole grind of things. And it goes alongside multiplayer because it can also be discontinued or unlisted, which is super fun. So, okay. If a game has any form of downloadable content whatsoever, then it's counted in this list in a few separate ways, similar to the previous. Uh, first of all, is it free? Some games have free content updates that you have to download separately. That's fine. Some games, or I guess most games nowadays, have free title updates. Now, that isn't technically DLC, because a lot of people have their consoles set to automatically download those. And that's fine, too. But you do need an auto, or you do need um, an internet connection for that to be sustainable. And you also need to have the setting that it automatically downloads those. The reason I'm considering title updates as quote-unquote free DLC and not something separate is because while it might be rare, you can definitely conceive of an idea where somebody like has their auto updates turned off, they don't play a game for like five years, and for some reason that title update becomes broken or something. I don't know. I think it's possible. So I'm just making this as simple as I can. Paid DLC is extremely easy and self-explanatory. If you have to pay money for the extra content, there it is. And then I have two versions of Discontinued, which just makes things more complicated. If I have it as unlisted, that means I'm 99% sure I purchased this DLC before it went unlisted, but I haven't done it yet. Whereas Discontinued, I know with 100% certainty that I did not purchase it, and now I cannot purchase it ever again. Um, I believe for the purpose of these numbers, I counted both as discontinued, for fairness. Um, and then the final weird and niche classification I have for DLC is hardware. Technically, this is not DLC. But especially if you think about games like Guitar Hero or Rock Band, or maybe some other examples you can think of, these games require extra hardware to even play, let alone get all the achievements in. If you went out to your local game store right now and you bought a $5 disc of, let's say, Guitar Hero Metallica, you can't do anything with that game without buying a guitar. You cannot finish it without at least buying drums. So you're talking about an extra requirement of money on top of it. So I think it classifies as DLC just in the sense of additional content locked behind a paywall. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so with those three criteria I just spoke about, that leads to the final column here, which is the completion column, the entire point of the spreadsheet. There are only two criteria here, so this should be a little shorter, hopefully. I'm trying to not to stumble over my words too. If any of the three previous categories I talked about have a discontinuation, you know, if the co-op is broken, or if the online servers are shut down, or if the DLC is now unlisted and unobtainable, then the completion itself becomes discontinued. And these are the games that I want to talk about the most, but if all three of these features or these functions in the game are at least working, meaning if a game has none of them, great, like no co-op, no competitive, no DLC, it's just purely a single player experience, that's lovely. But as long as the, f the functions are working, 
if the co-op is fine, if the servers are up and the multiplayer is playable, if the DLC is acquirable, then the completion is possible. Those are the only two situations. And then on the right here, yeah, I have this little box. It just counted all the stuff for me, saved me a little bit of time with some very simple Excel formulas. Um, I'm talking about a total of 269 games that I have not finished, which is a little stressful. But with all of that, now that I've gotten through what the spreadsheet actually means, we can get into a couple more specific things that I wanted to talk about. And, you know, obviously once I made this main sheet, then I can just duplicate it and manipulate it as I saw fit. So, uh, from the 269 games, um, if we're talking specifically about backwards compatibility, then surprisingly only 67 of them, I believe? Yeah. Only 67 of them are not backwards compatible in the, in the sense that they cannot be played on the most modern console. That's honestly a pretty low number. Um, and again, if you'll notice, they're all 316 games and then PS3. So it's like the, just the oldest games, of course. Um, I didn't, I couldn't think of anything else to count on this sheet other than of the total games I originally had. That's That comes out to almost exactly one-fourth, which is, is pretty low. That's a pretty normal number. Like, I'm okay with that. That means, you know, three-fourths of all the games are backwards compatible. That's great. And I didn't list it here, but of all of these games that are not backwards compatible, I believe only 12 of them have discontinued completions. So that's obviously the worst case scenario game you can think of. Not accessible on modern consoles. You can't complete the achievements. That's just bad news all around, but still a low number. I was surprised by that. Now the, the co-op, multiplayer, or both category um yeah so obviously some games have co-op some some games have multiplayer some might have both some have neither i just wanted to like quickly count how many of each of these there were and i didn't want any like overlap or just weird numbers so basically what i came to is that 49 of the games have co-op but that's it just either local or online co-op requirements 57 of the games only have a competitive multiplayer component. There are 45 games that have both. And then this shocked me. But 118 games that have neither co-op nor competitive. Now, you will notice that I don't have DLC listed in this sheet because I have DLC separated. But still, like, if you look at that, that's 44% of the games that are single player only. They might require an, an internet connection for certain things, like especially if there's DLC you have to buy. But that's really not bad, once again. Like, almost half of the games are, because of the single-player nature, are going to have, like, a much longer lifespan, which is great. The DLC is... The, the DLC is what makes me sweat in a lot of ways, because it's... I don't like locking things behind an extra paywall. I actually love DLC. If a game I love is putting out more content, I'll happily pay for it as long as it's fair. It usually is. But basically, my from my numbers, 142 games require some form of um, DLC. I have it, yeah. That's, you know, not too bad. 127 games having no DLC is, is pretty surprising. But yeah, if, if, we, if we look at it that way, it's about half and half. So 46% of all the games have a DLC requirement, whether that be paid DLC or hardware, or the games are discontinued. That's not really fun. I will bring up one fun example, though. Um, Maybe the worst <laughs> example of, of paid DLC I've ever seen. The game Pinball FX2. If you haven't heard of it, it has 
37 listed DLCs that are required for achievements. And because of that and the nature of how difficult they are, only nine people tracked on true achievements have every achievement, which would, in a bubble, make it a rarer completion than Crypt of the Necro Dance. <laughs> but of course, that game is exclusive, and Pinball FX2 is not, to my knowledge. So they aren't perfectly comparable. But yeah, all of this is to say, once again, we talked about all these things. We get to the main portion of this this spreadsheet, which is the games that are discontinued as far as completions are concerned. And regardless of the reason they're discontinued, um, I've you know reached a number of 27 games from my library that I can no longer finish. That's um, I'll, I'll skip to the numbers a little bit, and then we'll talk about this. That's only 10%. Almost on the dot. These numbers all worked out really great, which is, I guess, the, the benefit of having a small sample size. Of the original 269 games, 27 being discontinued, that's 10%. That's a really small number. But the reason I really wanted to do a little bit of looking into this stuff and a little bit of research is because I wanted to look at the dates that these games became discontinued in any sense. So that's what I did. And you'll notice that these are drop-down menus. That isn't... That only really matters for two of these games, but I just wanted to be able to color code it in a nice way and have a couple of drop-downs. I will say that this was actually quite difficult to get good, solid answers on when games became, you know, discontinued. So... I had to like scour through a little bit of forums and, and try to find decent answers that people agreed upon. If it's in blue, like these first couple games are, um, blue is me saying I'm really not confident in that date. I'm pretty confident in like the year, maybe even the month, but I tried to pick a day that just made sense with what I was reading. It might not be perfect. Um, red is a lot easier. Red is there was pretty solid, substantial evidence that that is the day the game shut down or lost DLC or whatever. And then yellow is the odd one out. And I have yellow because it has... This is why I want to drop downs. Yellow has two dates. The first date is when the, the game or DLC became unlisted. And then the red is again when the game became truly discontinued, meaning it can't even be played or finished. So this one actually, what is this game, Rock Band Blitz? It had a four-year gap where it was no longer purchasable, but it wasn't broken yet. That's what yellow means. And then I have at the very end, I have Overwatch listed here. Overwatch is a very confusing situation. Um, every year they have seasonal events that bring new achievements, and then those events disappear for the year. No one ever knows if they're going to come back or if they're going to become unobtainable in the future. I don't know. I think it's it's a gray enough area that I wanted to include it in this list, but it absolutely might be possible. I'm willing to admit that this is maybe incorrect. Okay. So I looked at all the dates. I looked at the 10% of my library being discontinued, and I figured, you know, the dates probably are going to tell the story a little bit better and maybe back up my point from the last video specifically. And again, I will say that this sample size I used is tiny. You now it's only a 270 games out of possibly thousands, not more. But of my entire library, yes, only 10% are discontinued, but in the past five years, 74% of those became discontinued the last three years, that is still almost half at 48%. In the last 12 months from the recording of this video, which is June 21st, 2023, in the last year only, 40% of these have happened. So, if you look at the sheet, yeah, look how many you have clustered in 2022. 
A lot of shutdowns. Assassin's Creeds, Halos. You have a couple this year, Medal of Honors. Just as I was recording this, or not recording, but formulating this idea, a game called Syndicate shut down, like a week ago. This is kind of why I wanted to do this. You know, when I say that it, uh, an entire generation of consoles is quote-unquote ending, from an achievement perspective at least, it's because I just felt, you know, maybe I just felt it in the wind, that this was becoming more common. You know, if you think about the 360, it's, it's roughly 18 years old at this point. So... It's not crazy that these games are shutting down. It's just, I think we're kind of reaching a breaking point where this is gonna become really common. And those old 360 games that still have working servers, by some miracle, really. I mean, it's, it's a terrible business decision to keep these games alive this long when no one's playing them. But yeah, my the point I wanted to illustrate, and that I wasted probably 30 minutes of this video, and probably a lot longer on making the sheet, which I enjoy, don't get me wrong. The point I wanted to make is that this is all currently brewing, and I think we're, we're seeing the end times for the seventh generation. For the PS3 store, the Xbox 360 store, those are already like on shaky ground, as I'm sure you know. And I, I think games are starting to drop like flop. So, yeah, and then I, I do have one tab, which I'm not going to talk about at all, but this is like, I was counting like, okay, what's the Holy Trinity? What is the game that has no co-op, no competitive, and no DLC whatsoever? Like, you can buy this game on disc and just do everything no matter what. Like, these games might have like an endless lifespan because of that. I was like blown away that so many games met this criteria at 74. 74 games had none of it, which is amazing. <laughs> I guess I guess my final takeaway would be this. If I have one bit of advice or any advice specifically to achievement hunters, but anybody who might care about this type of thing, my advice would be think think a bit deeper about what games you think you will want to play in the future or think about games that you have played and you know there's DLC but you never picked it up or whatnot. I think if you care about your back library in that way, it's worth paying attention to whether they're backwards compatible or whether or not there's content in them that you might never be able to get again. That's just a reality that I think is important, and it obviously affects Achievement Hunters more. So if you're like me and you have this long list of games collected that you haven't completed, you might want to prioritize specific ones, meaning the ones you don't want to prioritize, the multiplayer ones, the ones that require boosting, blah, blah, blah. It might be good to start focusing on what is important to you about your own personal achievement hunting. Because, yeah, none of this is permanent. Another bit of advice would be the obvious one that everybody should know. Um, this is all out of your control. You know, we can try to be perfect. We can try to complete every game we want. And it... It's not always that simple, and it's it's a, a lot of times it's out of your control. Like I said earlier, it's a tremendously bad business decision to keep games alive for almost 20 years when nobody is playing them. So eventually they have to end. Many of the games will end. And if you don't have it completed when they do, that's okay. That's fine doesn't like it frustrates me sometimes when I you know I want to or I, when I start a game and I realize I can't finish it it's not a good feeling but that's my own personal thing you know we owe it to ourselves to engage with games 
in in whatever way we enjoy the most. But don't let the the achievement hunting process become more stressful than it needs to be. And that might sound like silly advice. I just wanted to say it because I'm mostly speaking to like myself. Um, and the other thing I'll say is that I, I obviously I did these videos purely for fun, and that sounds crazy because I made like a a spreadsheet. And if you don't know me personally, then I mean that is that just explains me entirely. I'm really strange, but. I, I love doing this stuff, and so I really hope it wasn't too boring. And if it did bore you and you, you know, no one, I mean, if they left, they're not here hearing me say this now, but I totally understand if this bores the hell out of people. It's not for everybody. This is just something that I enjoy in general. Maybe it's, you know, it, it's a personality thing, <laughs> but... um. This, this sheet was all about my personal gaming endeavors, so I can't imagine it would be helpful or interesting to anybody else in the world. That being said, if for whatever reason you want to actually view the sheet with more detail, I'd, I'd be happy to share access to it just for viewing. Just, I guess, comment or message me if that would be the case. And, yeah, I mean... It goes without saying, hopefully, but if you're still here, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a great day or a great night or whatever. Not both, though. Don't be too greedy. And <laughs> I'll, uh, surely at one point I'm going to actually play a video game on this channel. I know the background footage is me gaming, but maybe I'll actually play a game here and there. Or I'll just keep doing these weird ideas that nobody asked for. That's totally possible. And I do very much intend to make videos that are not about gaming. I enjoy other things. But yeah, no, anyways. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.